For a long time I've been wanting to make a PC case that looks like a Warzone loot box. When Warzone 2.0 launched I decided to get started on the project. In this video we'll go through some design details, how to assemble it and we'll be testing its performance. The outer design of the case itself was quite straightforward, but I actually spent a lot of time designing the butterfly latches so that they can open and close just by twisting them, securing the lid in place. I'll explain how they work during the assembly part later in this video. All of the parts were designed specifically so that they could be printed on smaller, more common printers like the Ender 3 or similar with zero support material. But I personally used both my CR10 V2 and Ender 3 to save time. My previous builds have all been designed using SketchUp and I realized it was time for me to upgrade my CAD software to something more suitable for the type of designing I do. I ended up trying Shaper 3D for this project and I'm really happy I did. It's such an easy to learn, easy to use program with a ton of cool functions. First off, we have the actual box, which consists of three separate pieces that join together. And the lid consists of two pieces that join together. The lid is secured in place with butterfly latches, just like the real thing. One of my favorite features on Shaper 3D is the visualization tool, which allows me to quickly see how my designs would look once printed without having to use third party software. Here you can change colors, backgrounds and more to get the best feeling of what the end result is going to look like. All the tiny parts for the latches were printed on a 0.4 nozzle on the Ender 3, but all bigger parts were printed using 0.6 nozzle. The larger nozzle size just really improves the overall strength and layer bonding, as well as almost cuts print time in half, so I highly recommend using a bigger nozzle for these big builds. Assembling this case is also very straightforward. The three main body parts are easily connected with these printed pins that just simply snap into place locking the parts together. These can also be glued in place if you want that extra peace of mind. After that we'll insert the custom dust filters that I made using only gyroid infill. Next we mount our GPU, which in this case is a Gigabyte 3070 Eagle OC card. It simply attaches to this bracket that will also hold the motherboard later. It's a good idea to attach all cables as you install each part as the space in this case is somewhat tight. The mounting bracket for the GPU and motherboard simply screws in place with M3 machine screws that will dig their own threads. All the holes used for mounting these brackets are countersunk so it's easy to know which holes to screw into. At this time we can add the PCI Express riser cable, which in this case is 300mm long. Now we can install the motherboard standoffs which will also thread themselves securely into the plastic. Then we can add the motherboard and secure it in place. The hard drive attaches to this bracket that easily mounts to the inner frame using M3 machine screws straight into the plastic. The power cable for the CPU can be fed down under the motherboard to keep things nice and tidy. By the way, I'll be using the Noctua L9i cooler for this build. But at the time of recording this, the CPU was in one of my older projects. For my motherboard's 24 pin connector, the cable on my power supply was just too short. I had to use an extender cable, but yours might be longer, so this may not be a required step for everyone. The power button I used for this build has a diameter of 12mm, and I will link to a similar button in the description of this video. Now we make sure all of our cables are connected to the power supply before installing the rear panels. The three rear panels simply screw into the main chassis. One downside to this build configuration is that the GPU is sideways. This means the display cable actually has to be installed at this point. So this is probably not an ideal travel case as the cable will be hanging out the back. The two 140mm fans attach together with these three plates that again mount to the main body with M3 screws that will thread themselves. Some of you may have noticed that I actually used threaded inserts for these holes on my belt, but that just turned out to be a mess and they actually feel a lot weaker than just threading directly into the plastic, so this has been changed for the final design. Now we can attach the rear and top panels together to complete the main body before we move on to the box lid and the latches. The lid is held in place by the front hook for the latch and the hinge in the back. I was afraid this would be too weak, but using two screws for each side on the hinge really locks the two parts together. All these hinges are actually printed place, so they will be printed as one piece each. 
Almost every single part on this build can be attached with M3 by 10mm screws. I really tried to keep it as simple as possible. Now that the main body is almost complete, we can double check that the lid opens and closes smoothly before we move on to one of my favorite parts of this build, the butterfly latches. It's so satisfying how smooth they open and close just by twisting the handle. The way they work is that we have this main body that has a hook and a rotating piece on it print in place. Into this part we slide another piece. Then both of these pieces are connected with a little pin, kind of like a piston and crankshaft in an engine. By rotating the round piece, it creates a movement in the other piece allowing the latch to open and close. Then we just pop this cover in place to hold the little pin in place so it won't fall out. Next we're going to attach the actual butterfly part of this latch. It's called this because of the shape of it kind of resembles butterfly wings. To attach this we need some super glue. And what's really important here is that as soon as the parts are squished together, we need to rotate the latch back and forth while applying pressure. This prevents glue from sticking to the moving parts of the latch. We need to continue this for about 20 to 40 seconds until the glue has cured. Once all the latches are glued in place and are functional, we can attach them to the main body the same way as most other parts, with M3 screws. The last touch for the outer cover are these handles, which are also print in place. They are only there for the look, and they are not intended to be used as actual carrying handles as they can easily snap out of place at any time which can potentially end really bad. Now the design is complete. I did also add some feet underneath the case to allow for airflow, but I actually forgot to record that part, but it's super self-explanatory just to use M3 screws like everywhere else. Anyways, I'm super happy with how it turned out, works really well as an on-desk setup as well as on a shelf or anywhere really. It just looks kind of cool. Over to some performance data. At the moment we have an Intel Core i5-10400 processor in this case, accompanied by a Noctua L9i low-profile cooler and a Gigabyte 3070 graphics card. The airflow was originally intended to be two exhausts at the top, but this actually ended up causing some issues, which I was afraid would happen. The hot exhaust from my GPU was actually sucked straight up past the motherboard causing the CPU temperatures to reach way over 90, which is absolutely not ideal. So my solution to that was actually to make the fan on the right an intake and the left one into an exhaust. This resulted in an airflow that pushes cool air right onto the CPU cooler as well as down to the GPU. This resulted in slightly higher GPU temperatures, as the hot air had to escape the other way instead, causing some of the hot air to be recycled by the GPU. The CPU, on the other hand, ended up steadily in the low 70s instead, which is a huge difference from the 90 plus we had before. I'll admit, the airflow isn't ideal in this case, and I did run into some issues with having one fan as an intake and one as an exhaust, especially when the lid was closed, as the design was originally intended for both fans to be exhausts. Now, if the lid was closed, they would actually end up just recycling the air, becoming hotter and hotter over time. During simple non-demanding tasks, this isn't such a big issue, but during heavy workloads, the easiest fix is simply to keep the lid open during demanding tasks. The temperatures will then stay steady around 70 degrees most of the time for this specific setup. With a design like this, when trying to recreate something, it's always a question of how much of the design you're actually willing to sacrifice for a good airflow, and I wanted the outside in this case to be free of any visible air vents. Overall, I'm happy with how it turned out, and I've used this for about two weeks so far. There's probably a lot I could have done differently on this build, and I've learned a lot during this project. What to do and what not to do for future projects. If you enjoyed this build, feel free to leave a like. If you really enjoyed this video and want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on my upcoming projects. Thank you so much for watching.